Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, what we're going to talk about is Cardano's formula. Okay, now Cardano's formula is a way of solving cubic equations, the general cubic equation. Okay, uh, so it's analogous to the quadratic formula for quadratic equations. Okay, now, uh, something that's key to understand about Cardano's formula is that it doesn't actually work directly on the general cubic equation. We firstly need to modify the general cubic equation to get it into a certain form, and then Cardano's formula is a formula which will basically tell us how to work out uh, the solutions to this new associated cubic equation. And then from the solutions to the associated cubic equation, we can get back the solutions of the general cubic equation. Okay, so let's discuss this. So let's start off by writing out uh, the form of a general cubic equation. Okay, so I'll just put the general cubic equation here. So x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. There is a general cubic equation, and we're assuming that a, b, and c are all elements of the complex numbers. Okay, now, uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us then that uh, this uh, general cubic equation will have three uh, zeros uh, in the uh, field of complex numbers, basically. They might not necessarily be distinct, but there are uh, three zeros of that. Okay, right. Uh, now, you'll notice that I have set the coefficient of the third degree term here equal to 1. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, how is that the general cubic equation? Surely you could have something there. Well, if you do have a non-1 coefficient of the uh, third degree term, of course, this coefficient can't be 0. If the coefficient there was 0, then it would just be a quadratic. Okay, so non-1 and non-0, then all you do is divide through by that number and turn the cubic into something of this form, basically. So this really is the the general form of the cubic. Any cubic uh, can be reduced into this form very, very easily just by dividing through uh, by the coefficient of the third degree term. Okay, and by doing that, the cubic that you get will have the same solutions as the original cubic, basically. So this is the general form of the cubic equation. Okay, now, uh, Cardano's formula then can't actually tell you what the solution to this is directly. What it, we have to do firstly is turn this into uh, an associated cubic equation, and then we can uh, use Cardano's formula to find the solutions of this associated cubic equation. And the associated cubic equation is going to be of the form y cubed plus py plus q is equal to zero, where p and q are now elements of the complex numbers. Okay, so we are going to find some associated cubic equation uh, for our original one up here, which has a zero uh, second degree term, basically. So the coefficient of the second degree term is zero. So we have no second degree term, basically. And Cardano's formula can then tell you uh, what the solution to an equation of this form is, or rather what the free solutions uh, to an equation of this form is. And basically, from working out the solutions of an associated equation like this, you can then go back very easily and get the solutions to your original problem. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do then is discuss how we can turn a general cubic equation, like the one in turquoise here, into an associated cubic equation where the second degree term uh, ha well, has a coefficient of zero, basically, so where we've got no second degree term, basically. Okay. Um, Right, and what we're going to do to achieve this is actually very similar to what we do in the case of the quadratic equation for completing the square. Okay, so I'm just going to go over what we do in the case of quadratic equations just to motivate what we're about to do here. Okay, so let's just write out the general quadratic equation. So the general quadratic equation is x squared plus ax plus b is equal to zero. Okay, so here's our general quadratic equation. And the way that we solve of quadratic equations is that we find an associated equation of the form y squared plus p is equal to zero. This is what completing the square is all about. What you do is you find an associated equation to your original uh, 
quadratic equation here, which is of the form y squared plus p is equal to zero, where basically you have made the first degree term vanish. You've made the coefficient of the first degree term zero, basically. Okay, and then you can solve this equation by radicals, basically. Of course, the solutions here are just x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative p. Okay, and of course, uh, providing uh, that uh, p is not equal to zero, uh, that will have two distinct solutions in the complex plane, the plus and the minus one. Okay, right. Um, and then what we can do is we can use the solutions to this associated equation to get the solutions of our original equation. So let me now go through this in a little bit more detail. So what we do in completing the square is we rewrite this general quadratic equation here like so. Okay, so we write it as x plus a over 2 squared, and then we have plus b minus a squared over 4 is equal to 0. So we've just rewritten this. If I expand this, what do I get? I'll get x squared from the x times the x. Then I'll get uh, the cross terms where I've got a over 2 times x, and I'll get that twice. So I'll get plus ax, and then I'll get this term squared, which will be plus a squared over 4. Then I'll add on this bit here, so I'll add on the b, and I'll subtract off the a squared over 4, so I'll end up back with x squared plus ax uh, plus b is equal to 0. Okay, so this is just this equation rewritten in this fancy way. But what I can now say is let's let um, y, this new variable here, equal x plus a over 2. And if I do that, if I substitute in y there, I get y squared plus b minus a squared over 4, which is just some complex number. It's just a constant, so we could call that p is equal to 0. So I have found you this associated equation, basically, up to your original quadratic equation. And it's done through this uh, way of just rewriting the quadratic equation uh, in this way, okay, which is often called completing the square. Right, okay, and then by finding the solutions to this associated equation, so substituting this in as y, and then using this as your p here, so you'll get that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative this thing here. Okay, so you'll get a squared over 4 minus b, basically. Okay, so I'll just write that down, y is equal to plus or minus the square root of a squared over 4 minus b. Okay, so you get your two solutions to this associated equation, and then you can get the solutions of this equation back again very simply, uh, because we know that whenever x plus a over 2 is equal to one of these solutions, then the associated equation uh, will be 0, basically. And well, when y is equal to one of these solutions, then our associated equation is equal to zero. Therefore, if we make x plus a over 2 equal to one of these solutions for the associated equation, that must mean that our real quadratic equation, the real problem that we had uh, here, were, would also be equal to zero, basically, because of the nature of how this is related to this. Okay, uh, so we can then just say that x plus a over 2 needs to equal one of these two solutions for y, and then all we need to do is subtract a over 2 off both of those solutions to get solutions that x can be in order to satisfy our original equation. Okay, right. So that's how we solve quadratic equations by reducing it to this associated equation here, okay, and solving the associated equation, and then we can use the solutions to the associated equation to find the solutions for our original problem. Okay, right. So that's the motivation for what we're going to now do with the cubic equation. Now, unfortunately, we can't actually reduce the general cubic equation down to something in the form of y cubed plus p is equal to zero. It would be lovely if we could, but we can't, okay? However, we can reduce the general uh, cubic equation down to something of the form y cubed plus py plus q is equal to zero, and that's what we're about to do. Okay, so it's very, very similar to what we just did uh, with the quadratic equation. Okay, we are going to put x plus a over 3 this time, and we're going to have it cubed. And that will actually give us the first term of this uh, cubic equation and the second term. Okay, so let me now show you this. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to just rewrite this, basically. I'm going to have it as x plus a over 3 cubed. Okay, and that is actually going to successfully give us 
both of these first two terms, and then I just need to make the um, uh, the uh, first degree and uh, constant term match up. Okay, so what I'm then going to do is I'm going to have plus bx plus c, and then I'm going to have to subtract off the um, first order and constant terms that this gives us. Okay, so what does this give us? Well, let's just expand what this is out. Okay, so this will give us x cubed just by the binomial expansion. Then we'd have three uh, times this, a over 3, times x squared, which will just end up giving us plus a x squared. The next term will be this squared, 3 times a over 3 squared times x, and then you'll finally end up with a over 3 cubed, like so. So that's just the binomial expansion, basically, of this x plus a over 3 cubed um, term here. Okay, right, so let's just write this out a bit more. So what we've got here is we've got a squared over 3x overall, because when you square this, you'll get a squared over 9. That'll cancel with this 3 just to give you a 3 there. Okay, and then here we'll have a cubed over 27. Okay, so now what we need to do to make this actually equal to our original cubic here, we need to add the bx and the c on to give us the correct terms here, and we need to subtract these portions off that this is going to give us that we don't want. So we're going to need minus a squared over 3x, and we're also going to need minus a cubed over 27. Okay, so those bits are just to get rid of the bits that this contributes that we don't want, basically, and then we're just adding on the bits that we do want as the uh, first degree and constant term of this cubic equation. Okay, so we can rewrite our cubic equation like so. Now let's think about what we are intending to do overall here. We are intending to later make the substitution of y is equal to x plus a over 3. Okay, so that we will then get a cubic equation in the form of y. So this will become y and we'll have y cubed. Okay, we now need a constant term in terms of y. Oops, let me just bring this down, we need a const, uh, sorry, we need a first degree term in terms of y, okay, so what we need to do is now try and rewrite what we've got left here in terms of x plus a over 3, okay, so let's have a think about this, so we need b minus a squared over 3 times x, so basically what we're going to need is b minus a squared over 3 times x plus a over 3, that's going to have to be one of our terms. So basically what I'm saying now is we're going to try rewriting the cubic further. So we're going to keep this x plus a over 3 cubed portion. Then we're going to add on now b minus a squared over 3 times x plus a over 3, like so. Okay, and this will now fix the first degree term because this portion will provide the bx, which we need here, and it will also provide the minus a squared over 3x, so that will make that portion right. Then we just need to make the constant term correct, so we keep the plus c, and we keep the minus a cubed over 27, and now we just need to get rid of the constant term that this portion that we've just created gives us. So we need to get rid of this ba uh, over 3, because when we multiply this out, we'll get b times a over 3 here, and we don't want that, so we're going to have to then take that off again, so we'll need minus b a over 3 to get rid of that term that we create through this new first degree term that we've created here, and we also need to get rid of the minus a cubed over 9 that we'll have here, so we'll need to add on a cubed over 9. Okay, and basically if you expand this great thing out, my claim is that that will just return you back to your original cubic equation. So all I have done is I've taken this equation here and rewritten it in this clever way here, like so. Okay, and now why is that clever? Well now what I can do is just replace x plus a over 3 with this new variable y. So I can say let y equal x plus a over 3, and then we'll get y cubed plus b minus a squared over 3 times y, plus this hideous mess here, c, uh, and we'll try and combine these two together. Remember, this is going to be 3a cubed over 27, so we'll cancel this with this, and we'll get 2a um, cubed over 27, so we'll get plus 2a cubed over 27, 
and then we'll get minus BA over 3 is equal to 0. Okay, right, now all we have to acknowledge then is that this term here, b minus a squared over 3, this is just a constant, that's just some complex number, so we can call that uh, constant now p, the complex number p, okay, and again, this mess here, c minus, sorry, c plus 2a cubed over 27 minus ba over 3, that's just a constant as well, so we can call that q. Okay, so basically what we have now got is this associated equation y cubed plus py plus q is equal to zero, where p and q are just complex numbers that are related to the original complex numbers of our original cubic in this complicated way, basically. Okay, right, so there is how we build this associated equation uh, for our general cubic equation. Okay, um, so Basically, what we're now going to do is we're going to use Cardano's formula to solve uh, this associated equation for our general cubic equation. So we're going to find three solutions, three complex numbers that satisfy this. And then by solving this associated equation, we can then go back to our original cubic equation, which is up here. Okay, and we can just say, okay, right, the solutions to the original equation are values of x such that x plus a over 3 is equal to one of the solutions for this associated equation. So we'll end up with three solutions for this associated equation. Let's call them y1, y2, and y3. Okay, we now just want x values uh, such that when x plus a over 3 Sorry, when you take x and add it to a over 3, that is equal to one of those three solutions, and you'll get those three x values, which will be simply the three y values, uh, subtract a over 3, basically. Okay, and when you put in uh, to the original equation one of those x values now, uh, that will have to be a solution to the equation, because when you add a over 3 onto that x, you'll get one of the solutions for this associated equation, and then of course, because of the relationship between the associated equation and the original equation, that's going to mean that uh, that value has to now satisfy the original equation. Okay, right, so we'll call it there for this video, and in the next video what we'll look at is how then do you actually find the solutions for an equation of this form. All we've done so far is say that any cubic equation can be reduced into a cubic equation of this form. So we can reduce the problem of finding a solution for any cubic equation to the problem of solving these sorts of cubic equations, but we haven't actually seen how you can solve these equations, and that's what Cardano's formula is all about. How do you solve these equations? And it is basically a magic trick. It is incredible what we're about to say. It's incredible that someone worked out how to do this, okay? But it does seem quite unmotivated. Hopefully what we've done so far seems very, very logical, and if you thought about it for long enough, you'd have come up with it. Cardano's formula is very unmotivated, the derivation, okay? It is just someone had a fantastic fantastic guess and it ends up working, okay? It's something that it would take you years and years and years of sitting and thinking maybe to come up with, okay? So uh, we'll see that in the next video.